58 million years ago in France, a small but long-limbed mammal clings to a slippery tree trunk in a search for fruit. It was called Plesiodapis. Its eyes were on the side of its head, it had a bushy tail, and it had elongated rodent-like front teeth. But it had long limbs with flexible joints, so it would have looked like a squirrel crossed with a lemur. Behind its rodent-like teeth and along its rodent-like jaws, Plesiodapis had teeth very much like those of lemurs, monkeys, and apes. This is because it was a member of a group of tree-climbing animals that would eventually give rise to the primates. Plesiodapis was not alone, and there were many rodent and primate-like animals traversing through the tree branches of the Paleocene 60 million years ago, and they were called the Plesiodapiforms, named after Plesiodapis. Currently, the earliest known Plesiodapiform was called Purgatorius, which were first discovered in Montana, and may have lived as long as 65 million years ago, just after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. They were probably about the size of a squirrel, although not much is known about what they looked like as they are only known from their teeth, and their back teeth had evolved for grinding and crushing to transition to including more fruit in their diet. However, unlike most Plesiodapiforms, their teeth were much more primitive, and they probably ate a lot more insects than most living primates, or later Plesiodapiforms. In 2012, an ankle bone of Purgatorius was discovered, and it was found that it would have allowed for a large range of movement, showing they would have made good tree climbers. So it seems that as the Plesiodapiforms started eating more fruit, they adapted to be more at home in the trees to reach this new food source. The exact relationship of Plesiodapiforms with other animals, and with each other, is not completely figured out. The closest group of living animals that are related to primates are rodents and lagomorphs, which contain rabbits and hares, which is why a lot of the earliest primates and primate ancestors, like the Plesiodapiforms, tend to have some rodent-like features, as they are carryovers from their ancestors. However, a small unusual animal that lives in Southeast Asia, called the Kalugo, is even more closely related. Kalugos are from a family of tree climbing gliders that would have split from the primates some 60 to 70 million years ago. But this family are now all extinct apart from two species that DNA evidence show are our closest non primate relatives. Some scientists think that the Plesiodapiforms were more closely related to Kalugos than modern primates, and others think that they were stem primates, a group that split away from primates early in their evolution before they became true primates. Or perhaps some Plesiodapiforms were more closely related to Kalugos, and some were stem primates. The one thing that was for sure is that they were very closely related to the first primates. The earliest true primates first appeared in the early Eocene about 55 million years ago. But at this time the dominant primate group weren't monkeys, and instead the forest and jungles were filled with a group of primates known as the Adapiforms. Plesiodapis actually meaning before Adapis because the Adapiforms were discovered before the Plesiodapiforms, and at the time it was thought that the Adapiform primates were monkeys. However, it is now known that they were actually more closely related to lemurs, and although they were quite diverse, many of them would have looked like lemurs as well, including having forward-facing eyes rather than on the side of their head like the Plesiodapiforms. Some of these primitive primates and primate ancestors have very well-preserved fossilised skulls, with the brain casing still intact, giving us clues about their anatomy. First, it was found that both the Plesiodapiforms and Adapiforms had fairly small brains, smaller than both monkeys and lemurs. But also, it was found that although there wasn't much difference of overall size between the two groups, they differed in a few different ways. In the Adapiform species studied, the part of the brain responsible for smell, known as the olfactory bulb, was smaller, while it seems that there was an expansion in the area of the brain responsible for vision, which makes sense seeing as their eyes were more forward-facing so it seems the adapiforms show the transition of when primates started to become more visually oriented. Adapids and lemurs, but also other living primates like lorises and galagos, are known as the strepsorhines, or wet-nosed primates. The strepsorhine primates are now isolated to a few nocturnal niches in Africa and Asia, and of course their last true stronghold of Madagascar. But during the Eocene, they were a global force, with teeth and bones belonging to different species being found throughout much of North America and Europe. At this time, the Earth was going through a climate event known as the Eocene Thermal Maximum, where temperatures were considerably hotter than they are today, and so areas like Europe and North America had tropical climates, with heavy rainforest persisting much further up north than they do today. 
and so the habitats of these continents were much more primate friendly and is why primate fossils can be found much further north than where they live today. Although less common than the Strepsorhine primates at this time, the ancestors of monkeys and by extension our ancestors were also hidden in these jungles, known as the Haplorhines, or the dry-nosed primates. One of these primates named Archecebus, found in China, was a sign of things to come. It hasn't been assigned to the monkey category, known as the Anthropoids, which contain monkeys and apes, as it was actually a member of an offshoot from before monkeys that amazingly still has two living species that survive today, living in the Philippines and Indonesia, the Tarsia. Although the Tarsias aren't a window into the past, as they are noticeably different from their ancestors, as they have heavily specialised as nocturnal hunters, being the only fully carnivorous primates. Archecebus had a similar skeleton to a Tarsia, but its feet, and specifically its heel bones, were very similar to monkeys like marmosets which has led scientists to believe that it was very close to the common ancestor of monkeys and the other primates. Monkeys, or anthropoids, first appeared about 35 to 45 million years ago, animals like Eosimius, known from China, being among the first true monkeys, Eosimius meaning dawn monkey. Very soon after their evolution, they split into two groups, the New World and the Old World monkeys. In the past, primates could be found in many parts of the world where they are not found today, and also they didn't inhabit regions where they now have a strong presence. Namely, South America remained primateless until the late Eocene. Unlike a lot of the northern continents that remained fairly close together and accessible for millions of years, South America was heavily isolated from the rest of the world, and had its own unique fauna. However, from about 35 million years ago there is evidence of monkeys inhabiting the region, most likely having come from Africa. Many of South America's animals migrated from North America when the continents connected about 3 million years ago. But monkeys arrived here considerably earlier, and due to evolving there separately from the other monkeys in the Old World, they evolved unique features, and so are named the New World Monkeys. How they got to South America isn't known, because even though Africa and South America were much closer at this time, there would have still been over a thousand miles of ocean separating the continents. However, the ancestors of the South American rodents, like capybaras and guinea pigs, also arrived in South America around this time, so maybe there were a series of islands or some sort of land bridge joining the continents to break up the journey. However, more evidence would be needed to know for certain. Old world monkeys were ancestral to the apes, but also the most intelligent monkeys living today are thought to be capuchins, which are new world monkeys, showing that both of these monkey groups are highly intelligent and it was thought that their large brain to body size was a defining feature of anthropoids, but interestingly a new discovery shows that this isn't the case. There was an old world monkey that lived in Egypt about 30 million years ago called Egyptopithecus, that has a really well preserved fossilised skull with an intact brain casing. Working out the intelligence of long dead creatures from the fossils is unsurprisingly not completely accurate but to a reasonable degree it was found that at best their intelligence was lemur-like and at worst they were less intelligent than any living primate. This shows that when the new and old world monkeys split, they had much smaller brains, showing that the high intelligence of both monkey groups is actually convergent evolution, and shows that the high level of intelligence that monkeys possessed may have actually evolved twice. So from Plesiodapus to modern monkeys, there was a transition from having many rodent-like traits to developing the features that make primates unique many of these features being inherited by humans as well. Thank you for watching. A big thank you to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.